Suffering is the word which has been most widely used to translate into English. But suffering doesn't convey quite the subtlety or the breadth of the word dukkha. The Buddha explained it not only in terms of physical and mental suffering, he also said to be, to associate with what one does not like is dukkha. So you're stuck here. Maybe you're getting bored already, but you're stuck. You want to go home. That's dukkha. Separation from what you do like is dukkha. So maybe you're regretting that you're missing a football match on the television. Mm -hmm. That's also dukkha. And finally he said, not to get what one wants is dukkha. And how many times a day do we not get what we want? We want all sorts of things some minor, some major, but we don't always get them, and so that is dukkha. So it's much more subtle than the English word suffering. Dukkha, difficult to endure. Whatever is difficult to endure is dukkha. And it covers a huge spread of our experience. It covers the gross forms of suffering, like physical pain, but it also covers little minor irritations and frustrations and disappointments that we can experience on a daily basis. So it's a very very subtle, widespread meaning. We don't perceive things correctly, and then we get tangled up in all sorts of wrong kinds of thought, wrong kinds of perception, which means that we misunderstand things, and from that stems a lot of our problems. Uh, as the Second Noble Truth tells us, there is a cause to dukkha, so that means it is an effect.